Good morning, I hope you're all well. Today, I wanna to have a, a look back at, at my car, my Nissan Leaf. It's a 2015 Nissan Leaf Tecna. I bought it when it was new, uh, and it's now done over 76 and a half thousand miles. So I wanna have a little look back. Now, I, I have at various points, I put videos together just sort of to take a snapshot in time so that we could see how things were progressing with this car and whether it was a good buy or not. But now at 76 and a half thousand miles, you could consider this uh, a cheap used buy maybe, an affordable used buy. It's certainly, if you were buying a petrol or a diesel car, you would put it in that category. So what I'd like to do is try and, by the end of the day, give you an idea of what this has cost me, uh, how I've got on with it, and maybe answer that question, is, is this 2015 Nissan Leaf a good used buy? So the plan for today is to have an overall look around this car. I'll tell you about some of the bits and pieces that have been good and bad with it. Uh, and probably the most important thing and the thing that everybody wants to know is what about the battery health? At uh, 76 and a half thousand miles, is there any battery left worth talking about? Uh, does it need replacing? Is it gonna cost me a fortune? Or is it absolutely fine? And is this a good viable car to look at as a used buy? So let's start with the inside, seeing as we're in here. And in general, uh, I've said it all along at the various uh, progression points, the inside of this car, the quality, the build quality is very, very good. There's a couple of little things I'll talk about, but uh, there's no squeaks, rattles, there's no issues. It's nice and refined and quiet in here. I I've never had a problem with the, the interior of this car. I remember this is a Tecna, so this is the top of the range. So leather seats come as standard, 360 degree cameras are in here as standard. And so uh, this has got everything in it. And, I think if you're looking at a used buy, no matter whether it's an electric car or not, it's always best to try and find one that's at the top of its range because I think you get the best value for money when you do that. So as I said, the, the overall quality is very, very good, but if I was to pick a couple of things that have caused problems whilst I've had this car, the first would be this driver's side window. Uh, and I, I, it's a, a common problem I've seen on forums in, in other Nissan Leafs. When you put it down, Sometimes it squeaks and it squeaks really, really badly. It's as if the fit isn't quite right and the outer trim is rubbing quite severely against the window. Sometimes to the point where when you pull up the, the switch to bring it back up again, it gets so tight, it stops it and it goes back down. Now reading the forums, the answer to it was basically run some silicon spray along that rubber seal which I did the first time I did it, it wasn't too bad. It ran for a few months, it was okay. The second time I did it, it seems to have just solved it completely. That window goes up and down quite happily now. So that was one problem. The other problem I had was with the fan. Uh, the cabin fan was making a noise as if there's something stuck in there. I tried to get to it, I've had dashboards off and things. I found it really, really difficult to, to isolate it and find how to get it out. And it, um, it caused me probably, well, a lot of annoyance, annoyance for a number of weeks because it was constantly as if it, the, the blades were just catching on something which was really driving me mad. Uh, and then half a day of trying to get dashboards out and try and find the fan to get it out, pulled the cabin filter out, that didn't seem to solve it. It happens in other cars, it was probably a leaf or a twig or something in there. And the frustration got the better of me. By the end of the day, I hit the dash in anger and it solved it. So uh, I guess the answer there is if you've got a problem, hit it and it goes away. Um, I suppose that's my finest form of DIY, take a hammer to everything. It worked, it's not been back since. There was obviously just something just lodged in there and it, that got rid of it, it blew it out. So that's gone now. So they were the only two real bugbears or I suppose issues within the cabin that could have cost me money and they were relatively cheap or free fixes in the end. Uh, around the rest of the, the cabin here, my other annoyance, I always say it, is this shiny black plastic, drives me mad. Uh, with kids and things, there's fingerprints always all over it. Little scratches are, are showing up. That annoys me. Not a lot I can do about that, and a lot of cars have got it in now. Uh, the other thing that isn't brilliant is the, the, the screen. The screen's fine, it's an all right size. It's not as big as a lot of the newer ones, but the infotainment system as a whole, it's, it's okay. It Bluetooths up to your phone, but it will only accept one phone at a time, albeit you can put two phones onto it. But the problem is, if my wife's driving the car, her phone will be connected to it. If she then gets out and I take the car, it knows my phone, but it won't ever see my phone. So I then have to go and manually find my phone within the inf infotainment system and select it for it to connect. 
not a major issue, but it's, it's a bugbear and it, it's always bothered me. I don't know why it has to be like that. Uh, the mapping in here is absolute rubbish. Uh, I wouldn't use it. It just, it sends you all sorts of weird and wonderful routes. It obviously it needs updating because it hasn't got a live update on there. I tend to just plug my phone in and use Google Maps. It's much better. Uh, the sound system though, again, because this is a Tecna, it's got this Bose sound system with a, a sub in the boot and it sounds brilliant. As far as factory installed sound systems go, uh, I'm really, really impressed with it and I don't feel the need to do anything at all with it. I really like it. So thumbs up all round really for what's in front of me here, the dash, the layout. And it's worth mentioning again, because it is a Tecna, you do not only get heated seats in the front, you get a heated steering wheel, you get heated seats in the back. Uh, and as with all these cars, they will connect via your phone. So you can set up a timer every morning if you come out to drive to work at half past seven every morning, especially during the winter, it can all be nice and toasty warm for you with warm seats, steering wheels, and the cabin all de-iced. So that, that's very, very nice. But as I say, with the Techno, you get that little bit extra and the kids love it in the back with the warm seats. All right, let me show you outside this car. I've had to stick a jumper on because it's raining now, so we'll do this quickly. It, to be honest, it's only going to be quick because there's not an awful lot to tell you because it's, it's very, very good in the hole. Uh, the general condition, the general paintwork, the general feel of the outside of the car, well, it's been great. Um, I did clean it all up yesterday, ready to do this for you, and it's been raining and it's got all horrible, but um, you get the general idea. No problems with the paint, no issues outside. Uh, I've been very, very pleased with it. The only little things to point out on the front bumper here, I don't know if you can see this, just here. Uh, somebody decided to bump me in a car park. They left their details, which were very kind of them, but those details were completely false. So uh, yeah, so uh, left to me to sort that out. The other thing is just on the wheel, this front wheel here, uh, down the bottom here and here, it's done a little bit of that sort of spider legging where um, I've obviously, I've just used uh, a chemical, one of these alloy wheel cleaners, it was a bit harsh, and um, it's obviously just got in behind the lacquer. It hasn't done it on any of the other wheels, just this one, so there's obviously a little bit of a weakness on there. I don't know whether it got knocked or something maybe and, and caused that, but um, I've stopped doing it. I've learnt my lesson on that. And while we're on the tyres, certainly uh, I was putting on some expensive tyres that were supposed to be very highly efficient, very low noise. Uh, I was paying about £120 a tyre for those. I've stopped doing that because, for whatever reason, these tyres wear a little unevenly and they wear around the edge quicker than the rest of the tyre. Uh, in fact, a lot quicker and I'm throwing away tyres that generally look quite good but the edges are wearing out. I got fed up of spending so much money so I'm putting budget ones on now and just going through them like that. So. Uh, uh, noise wise I haven't noticed a lot of difference but then I'm doing a lot of mileage so once the tread starts to come down a bit I guess the noise goes up anyway uh, it, it hasn't bothered me at all. The other thing to mention just while we're out here is this passenger door lock. Now if I push this button that should make it lock or open. The keys are in my pocket here it's not doing either so that is really temperamental. Most of the time it doesn't work at all. Occasionally it will start working, but um, I don't know. There's obviously a loose connection in there somewhere and um, I don't know what's the matter with it. But other than that, I've been really, really pleased. As I say, everything outside this car has been really good, really good quality, hasn't let me down. Uh, a sponge and a, a wash over every couple of weeks and a bit, a bit of a, a wax. And um, yeah, I think it still looks brilliant, especially when the sun's shining, which obviously it's not now. Um, it, it really glistens. Right, let's get back in the warm and out of the rain. So. Uh, this is the important bit. This is the bit all about the battery. This is what you've been wanting to know. So I've got my book, I've written everything down so I don't forget anything because there's quite a lot of information here to let you know about. Uh, the first thing is to let you know that my first bar of battery disappeared at 70,000 miles. It took me that long to lose the first bar. Um, I think the next thing we need to do is, I'm all connected up to Leaf Spy. I'm about to hit the button to have a look and tell you and find out for myself exactly how much health I've got left in my battery. So uh, let me go through this. I'll flash it up on the screen so you can see. Right, so 76 and a half thousand miles, nearly six years of ownership. My battery health is at 84.98%. So 85% battery still left. That's not bad, I don't think. 15% battery loss in the time, uh, in, in all those years. I'll talk through what that means in a second about actual real world mileage, but um, I'm pleasantly surprised at that. Losing a bar at 70,000 miles and then 85% still left. 
So in the real world, well, when I first bought this car, a full charge, occasionally I saw 100 miles come up on the, the guesser meter. Uh, that was never realistic, it never did that. Realistically, 80 miles to a charge, I think I was quite comfortable with that. Uh, I've changed how I've driven this car over the last five and a half, six years. Initially, I bought it because I was doing very short journeys, six miles to and from work, maybe 10 miles here, 15 miles there, that was it. So it never caused a problem for me. I've since changed where I'm working, I've now got an 80 mile round trip. So I have to drive, uh, certainly first thing in the morning through the winter, uh, minus one, minus one, minus two degrees, 40 miles of driving, uh, it soon started to take its toll on the battery. Add into that, I'm having to rapid charge every day. Actually, that makes those figures all the more impressive. A year of rapid charging, I thought it was going to absolutely obliterate my battery. So I've gone from being comfortable at about 80 miles. I can now, in the winter, I would suggest I'm looking at about 60 miles per charge. Uh, and that's driving, as I drive at the moment, probably uh, for, in the 40 miles going to work, I do probably five miles uh, town, probably 10 miles A road, 10 miles on a dual carriageway, and then another five miles town the other end. So that's probably how it makes up my, my 40 miles. The A roads, I'm definitely doing 60 because the times of days I'm traveling, it's very, very quiet. Dual carriageway, I'm definitely doing 70. So give you an idea that I'm not doing 50 miles. If I was doing 50 miles an hour everywhere, this battery would still be lasting 80 miles plus, but I'm not. I'm driving like you would drive any car trying to get to work. So I think in the winter, low 60s. I think uh, in the summer, and I've started to find it now the last week or so, now it's starting to warm up a little bit. Uh, I'm definitely high 60s towards 70 miles per charge. So that gives you a real world idea. What I also wanted to do, and some more figures I've written down, is just look at the comparisons, cost of ownership, purely based on fuel alone. So electric against petrol or diesel, however you want to look at it. So I've looked at this car at 75,000 miles. Uh, if we're working it out, at this can do 60 miles per charge. Now that's below what I said it could do, but um, let's, let's make it fair. Let's say 60 miles per charge because I'm doing 70 mile an hour everywhere for those 60 miles or however you want to work it out. So 75,000 miles, 60 miles per charge, that's 1,250 charges in order to make that up. Home electricity, well mine is about 12p, but let's work on 13p per kilowatt hour. Uh, this car do, is a 24 kilowatt battery in it. Now let's if it's got a 24 kilowatt hour battery when it was first made, uh, not all of that was usable and it's certainly not all usable now, but we're still going to push our edge our bets a bit or take it over the top. We'll say it can still take 24 kilowatt hours. Um, so 13p per kilowatt hour over 24 kilowatt hours is £3.12 pence per charge. So £3.12 times that by the 1,250 charges we need to do to get, to get up to 75,000 miles, that is £3,900 it's going to cost me to cover 75,000 miles. Then I worked it out on a, an average car, 75,000 miles. Imagine we, you could do 500 miles per tank and uh, it costs £70 per tank to fill it up. I don't think that's an unreasonable amount. Uh, 500 miles into 75,000, that's 150 times you need to fill up. 150 times 70 is £10,500. So 3,900 up to 10,500, that's a massive saving. So there you can see straight away, just on fuel alone, if you're gonna charge at home, I appreciate if you're going out and using rapid charges, it's gonna be very, very different. I just wanted to give you a general figure uh, for your, your own assistance, really, if you're thinking about buying one. Um, yeah, that's a huge saving. But also remember, there's no exhaust, there's no um, oil, there's no oil filters, all these extra things, car tax, there's no tax on this. All those extra things you can add on to it as well. So uh, yeah, I don't think anyone can argue that electric cars aren't cheaper to run. Let's um, not worry about the initial costs of some of the new ones. Um, if I was to buy one now, as I said before, I would look at the Tecna, which is what this one is, because you get that extra for not a lot more. I had a quick look in Auto Trader uh, earlier on. I could see uh, the same car as this one uh, with 16,000 miles on it. It was £9,295. I looked at one with 50,000 miles on it. It was £7,200. So you can see with those savings as well on fuel, I think, coming back to that initial question, you can safely say that these cars 
if they fit and if they suit how you want to drive, i.e. you're not doing more than 60 or 70 miles a day, um, I think you can now say that these are cheap, affordable, second-hand cars. And you know, there's nothing to do in it. Nothing's gone wrong. I haven't had to do anything. I haven't had to spend any money out on it. It's just worked and it's worked really, really well. I've been really impressed. So uh, go and do your own figures, make your own mind up. You never know, this could be the next cheap car that you uh, never knew you could, uh, you never knew you would own. But um, go and have a little look for yourself. Hopefully today's video has helped you. It's given you that information. It's certainly given me some information around my battery health. I've been really impressed with that, 85% still. It's incredible considering the way I treat it. So I'm very, very good. Um, that's it for now. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, remember to like and subscribe. And um, until next time, you take care. I'll see you soon.